but you mean yeah, bad as in game cat? Don't don't the right I did so much. All right, let's do this. I'm getting background noise from Delta Fluff. Okay. Um. All right. We good. Uh, we good. OBS mm -hmm. has begun. Got it. Undertale Yellow, Dreams of Peace, Chapter 12, Battle Against the King of Monsters. Clover and Rena began walking downhill as they could spot a small village far, far off from the top of the hill they were on. They figured that must be the Snowden Town they heard about. Clover was still shivering as, you know, as usual, but Rena huddled close to him to try and keep her fleshy, non-furry boyfriend as warm as she could. Are you sure he's not a furry? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Who knows? It's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's a bit I mean, on the. It's a bit on the nose. He is dating a fox. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> Clover suddenly sneezed as he turned his head away from Rena and covered his mouth with his with his elbow. Gazentai, are you okay, Clover, my friend? Yes, Rena but I was talking. <laughs> Rena asked with a concerned look. Clover snuffled. It, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Just a sneeze. Um, All right. Wait, oh. That's not you. Nah, yeah, no, 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 that's my <laughs> fault. <laughs> All right. Let's just hope we don't get sick. We should be almost there by now, as long as the narrator understands his job. Shush, shush. That was a that was a slip up. Honest mistake. <laughs> Soon I enough. know, and I'm going to make fun of you, because it's funny. Yeah, fair enough. Soon enough, the two of them reached the bottom of the mountain and walked along a snowy path which seemed to lead up to Snowden Town. As they were walking, they could hear footsteps running up behind them. Clover and Rena quickly turned around to see that, a ra that raccoon monster guy from before stop in front of them as he held his knees while catching his breath. Because he's taking a while to catch his breath. Uh, who's the voice actor for Mo? I think it's uh, Delta. who just disconnects. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, we'll, we'll wait on them. Put him back Bam. on stage. Oh, okay. Anyway, put him, put him back on stage. So, how are y'all? How's your weekend been so far? Oh, there we go. Uh, I didn't. You doing good? All right, let, let's continue off from that last line. Clover and Rena quickly turned around to see that raccoon monster guy from before stop in front of them as he held his knees while catching his breath. Mm. Sounds is working. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. That was the issue. Man, I was wondering why my mic's been having so many issues for like ever. just had to hit reset voice settings i had something on that was breaking my mic hmm. you know what line we're on uh no 
plan to fix it. Uh, it's right after <laughs> the longer patch for nar of narration. Wait a second. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, are we starting at Moe's line, or are we going somewhere else? Your yeah. Line. Well, yeah. Yeah. Right. You finally caught up, two two. I just want to say that I managed to restock on a few items, so I'd be happy to offer you two two to some to buy. Clover looked annoyed as he shook his head. Not interested. We're in a hurry right now. Well, young man, from the looks of it, you seem to be catching a case of the chills. Thankfully, I have just the thing that can warm you right up. Mo reached into his apparently infinite space pocket and pulled out a chocolate pop on a stick. Bro has hammer space? Clover rolled his eyes. Ah yes, of course, a frozen tree will warm me up. Well that's where you're wrong, young feller. You see, this ain't no frozen treat I got in my hand here. No, this is a completely new and original creation of yours truly. I call it the Super Hot Pop. It's like my original hot pop, but hotter. If you want to get warm, I suggest buying this thing before it cools down. Clover sighed as he relented. <sighs> okay, fine. How much is it? Well, normally I'd be selling this for 25G, but just for you, I'll be lowering it to the cheap price of just 24G. Quite the steal, right? So how's that sound? Rina sighed as she reached into her kimono pocket and pulled out a 24G from her wallet. Fine. Take it. Bloody daylight robbery. Mole looked excited as he took the money from Rena before handing the super hot pop to her. Thank you, valued customers. Enjoy my patented super hot pop. Now I must set up shop somewhere else. As Mo walked away, Rena handed the pop to Clover. Hmm. I'm surprised they use the same currency down here as on the surface. Lucky us, I guess. Clover took the pop and licked it. It was pretty hot, so at least Mo wasn't lying. It wouldn't really warm him up, but it would make for a nice treat. It's not bad, I guess. We should have scammed him with our non-monster currency. Oh well. Let's keep going, Clover. We should almost be at Snowden Town by now. And those guys we were talking to will probably have that final challenge for us just outside that town. Right. Let's go then. Clover took Rena's hand as he used his other to hold the super hot pop he was eating as they both continued along the snowy path. A couple minutes later, Clover and Rena op reached an open area in the snowy forest where they spotted Stawolf standing in front of a large boulder, who seemed to be closing his eyes in thought. As the two of them approached him, Stawolf suddenly opened his eyes and looked at Clover and Rena before his eyes widened in surprise. You're here! Gotta tell him! Stawolf quickly ran behind the huge rock where the two of them couldn't see him. Guys, they're here! Are we ready? Leopa quickly nodded. We sure are, Star Wolf. Just waiting on you. Get in here, quickly. Right. Coming in right now. Cobalt grunted. Oh, right. I was doing that. Sorry. Uh, hey, Star Wolf. Watch where you're going. You don't know how cramped it is here for me. Sorry, man. Okay, I think I'm in position now. We ready, guys? Leopa grinned in excitement. We sure are. Now charge! <laughs> Clover and Rena suddenly saw a huge wooden animatronic roll robot f roll out from behind the large rock. It looked to be about 15 feet tall, and it resembled a large goat monster. It had, yellow it had a yellow beard, which seemed to be made out of cotton balls, and its eyes were just large black buttons. The crown on its head was also made entirely of paper. The, the robot's arms were just wooden sticks that were screwed to the sides of its body. The body was entirely was made entirely of wood and it had no legs at all, just a wooden board with wheels. Before the two of them could fully process what they were looking at, 
the wooden goat monsters started a battle with them. Cobalt cleared his throat before he began speaking. Aha, fear me, humans, for it is I, the great king Asgore. Prepare to face my wrath. Clover looked dumbfounded. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Rena readied herself. There's the unmute button. Why is it so hard to find? Hmm, looks like we got to destroy Asgore earlier than we thought, eh? Well, just great, Clover said sarcastically as they started their turns. For their first turn, they used the act options to check their opponent. Asgore, attack 8, defense 8, the great king of all monsters who happened to be made out of wood. Then, Asgore started his turn. Alright, humans, here comes the pain. The wooden giant rolled over to Clover and Rena's souls as he lifted his arm. The two of them moved their souls out of the way as Asgore slammed his wooden arm through the middle of the battle box. His turn ended right after. How do you like that? Feeling scared yet? I would be if I was a human being face to face with the great monster king himself. Clover and Rena rolled their eyes as they start started their turns again. Looks like the looks like their only choice was to find and destroy the wooden king. Oh, well, hold on. <laughs> looks like their only choice was the to fight and... him. Yeah, no, they're looking for uh, the hide where, and seek. Where is he? Sudden hide and seek match. Where'd yeah. he go? There was a giant animatronic He's invisible. right in front of him. Looks like their only choice was to fight and destroy the wooden king. Clover shot a bullet at the king's head while Rena shot an ice bullet from her right hand into Asgore's chest, pushing him back. Aha! See, humans? You can't even hurt me because I'm the invincible king Asgore, Asgore said, looking visibly damaged from Clover and Rena's attacks. Asgore started his turn as he rolled over to Clover and Rena's souls before doing the exact same attack he did before. Leopa grumbled as their turn ended. Do we seriously just have one attack? Look, there's only so much we can do inside this thing, Leopa. Cobalt responded with a tired look. Starwolf shushed the two of them. Be quiet, you two! Look at them! They're totally buying our awesome disguise! Don't be too loud or else we'll blow their- or, or else we'll blow our cover! If this Asgore was going to use the same attacks, Clover and Rena figured they would do the same. So they used their turns again to attack the wooden mech the same way as before, which it seemed to do more damage to. Your attacks are futile, humans! Your souls are as good as mine. Asgore proceeded to do the same attack again, but with both arms this time. However, Clover and Rena just simply stayed in the middle of, of the box where the arms couldn't reach. Before Cobalt could speak, Sawulf. Before Cobalt could speak, Stawulf. Oh my god. Before Cobalt could speak, Stawulf tried imitating Asgore instead. Uh, should I try to do a bad Asgore impression for this since he's doing it? Or yeah, sure. I uh, know uh, it's it. I mean, it's Stalwolf saying I'm this. Metal. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. <clears throat> oh, this is gonna be interesting. For you humans, always this week. Maybe this story should be renamed Undertale Yellow: Dreams of Asgore. <laughs> Cobalt rolled his eyes. Seriously, Stalwolf, do you want this fix author to throw a lawsuit at us or something? Leopo looked down at her two friends. I see this fix has taken the cringy humor route. Yeah. Anyway, forget about it, you two. Look, stop breaking the fourth wall. Those guys are shaking their boots. Let's get them. Having enough of this fourth wall nonsense, Clover used his arm to shoot a bullet at the wooden board that was connected to the wheels, which destroyed it and made Asgore unable to move. Then his Rena shot an even an bigger. Of his gun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then Rena shot an even bigger ice bullet at Asgore's body, 
leaving a huge crack on it. His entire body began shaking and emitting smoke as it was about to be destroyed. Leopa began... Hold on, wait, this thing's smoking, but it's only made out of wood, isn't it? I don't know, yeah. I guess it has an engine. Harlot built it, that's why. <laughs> Fair enough. Leopa began to look panicked. No, this costume was perfect. Asgore, who we totally asked, definitely didn't make that up, loved it. We definitely asked him. The wooden costume suddenly exploded into several pieces as the three of them were sent flying and landed on the snowy ground. Cobalt got up first. Well, you two revealed our disguise. That's impressive. No, it's not. It's made of Ikea. Ikea wood. <laughs> then Stawolf got up as he readied himself. <laughs> made of Ikea. <laughs> now it's time for your real challenge to begin. Leopa brushed herself off as she stood in front of her two friends. Good luck, Clover and Rena. But for now, you'll face the might of the three future royal guards before you. Together we are the Arctic Squad. Cobalt looked confused. What? Well. Team name I just came up with. We can discuss it later, but basically it's awesome. Anyway, prepare yourselves, Clover and Rena. We can Leopa. sink your ship. Leopa, Star Oh, hold on. Leopa, Starwolf, <laughs> and Cobalt got into their battle positions as the fight continued. Starwolf climbed on top of Cobalt while Leopa climbed on top of him. Of course, this stupid fight has a phase two. It just keeps going, doesn't it? Just like this fic. Rena said in annoyance as she and Clover started their turn, which they used to check their now stacked opponents. The Arctic Squad attack. Or, sorry. The Arctic Squad stack. Attack 40, defense 4. Seems like this team of future Royal Guards are looking for a sparring match. A few seconds later, Leopa's team started their turn. Are you ready there to there to? Are you ready you two? Feast your eyes on our stack attack, which was definitely not based on Trihector. All three of them slashed their claws towards Clover and Rena, which summoned a column of magic slashes that were sent flying towards the two of them. They were just barely able to move their souls out of the way before the attack hit them. Clover breathed a sigh of relief, knowing that the attack would have done big damage if they got hit. Once, a, once their turn started, Clover shot a bullet at the bottom of the stack towards Cobalt. He quickly sidestepped to dodge the attack, but doing this began to make them lose their balance. Rena used this opportunity to send a magic gust of icy wind at the trio to top them, topple them over. Leopa fell down as the wind blew her off the top of the stack. Whoa, what happened? <laughs> what the fuck was that? Both Stawolf and Cobalt fell onto their backs while Leopa landed on her stomach. She had a determined look on her face as she got up. We're not finished just yet, you know. Leopa charged up a magic fireball in her hand before she launched it towards Rena. It moved faster than Rena thought, so she didn't have time to dodge. Instead, she summoned a magic shield in front of her and angled it upwards. The fireball bounced off the shield and launched way up into the air. Martlet flew above Snowden with a tired look on her face. Apparently she had to fly all the way to Snowden Town because the Royal Guard called off the guard stationed in Snowden to have an important meeting here. That was a confusing sentence. Martlet was happy that she even got the position at all, but she wished she wasn't stationed all the way in Lower Snowden. But someone had to watch that place, after all. 
Martlet sighed as she could see the small town ahead of her. Almost there. Finally. As she continued flying, Martlet suddenly looked down and saw a magic fireball quickly approaching her. Ah! She quickly dodged the fireball just in time, but this caused her to lose balance and began plummeting to the ground. Martlet couldn't control her wings in time before she fell onto the snowy cushion that is the ground. Before Leopa and her friends could try to attack again, a blue bird monster landed on the ground in front of them. Martlet groaned as she tried lifting her head. Uh, ow! Where'd that stupid fireball come from? Leopa nervously stepped back as she averted her eyes. Oh my god, all this effort on you and you on um oops. Rena walked over to the blue feathered bird. Um are you okay, bird lady? Martlet lifted her head as she looked up at Rena. <clears throat> oh hey, yeah. I'm fine. What happened though? Friends were just having a playful sparring fight, and I deflected one of those fireball attacks, which I guess launched towards you by accident. You know, because you're so hot. Sorry about that. Rena apologized with a nervous smile. Martlet stood up before brushing herself off, ignoring that next comment. <laughs> I feel like you're a little bit young for me. Um, don't worry about it, though. I gotta hurry, or else I'll run, or else I'll run late to my royal guard meeting in Snowden Town. Leopa's ears perked up as she heard this. What <laughs> second I die? <laughs> Should have called her chicken legs. You might have had a better chance. Dude, <laughs> what does that even mean? That sounds more like an insult than anything. Yeah, it does sound like an insult. Anyway, okay. Wait, you're part of the Royal Guard? Martlet nodded in affirmation. Yeah, I am. Uh, so I must be going. She was interrupted by Stawolf running up next to her with an excited grin on his face. Whoa, I'm so jealous. What's it like being the Royal Guard? Martlet nervously stepped back with a sheepish smile on her face. Oh, um, I'm pretty new, but I guess it's all right. Cobalt interrupted Martlet as he stood on the opposite side of her. Have you made any puzzles? What are your secrets to making them? Leopa excitedly pulled out of her. Leopa excitedly pulled out her piece of paper and pencil from earlier. Can I please have your autograph? Please, please, please. Clover side-eyed Reyna as they witnessed their three friends swarm the poor bluebird. Uh, Reyna, they seem distracted. Let's just go. Before I freeze my ass off, preferably. Yeah, let's just go around when I lie preoccupied. Reyna said as she took Clover's hand. The two of them walked past Martlet and the three monsters bombarding her with questions before continuing along the snowy path. Clover adjusted his hat as he, as he spoke. What that bird lady said was true. I guess we can't go to Stony Town right now if that place is full of Roy guards. Might have to sneak around that town or find another way into Waterfall. Rena looked to her right and saw a nearby river where the other side seemed to be part of Waterfall. Hmm. We just need to cross this river here, and we'll be right where we need to go. Um, I, I think you skipped a line. Oh. Oh, yeah. Hey, Clover, I have an idea. Let's just... float. Come here a moment, I'll tell what's happening. Oh, song. Okay. Rena led Clover to the river as she pointed to the other side. 
We just need to cross this river here and we'll be right where we need to go, as I said. Clover book. <laughs> Clover looked Clover both ways it. before looking back at Rena. I don't see any bridges besides the one near Stone in Town, which we can't go to. Swimming to the other side would be a death wish, for me at least. Clover books it across the river. Yesterday. I know. Yep. I know, Clover, but maybe I can use my ice magic to freeze some of the water and make a nice little ice bridge for us. That definitely won't make you more cold. It'll take a lot out of you, though. So we should find the part of this river that's narrowest. And you better get me some bloody sweets after we're done. Clover looked both ways of the river again before pointing to the right. I, I think I see a pretty narrow part of the river over that way. Rena looked to where Clover was pointing until she saw it. Oh yeah, that could work. I guess we'll head over there now. The two of them walked downstream next to the river. From where they were at, it didn't seem like they had to walk far, but it still took a few minutes. Clover looked over at Rena, who was somewhat scared. Clover looked over at Rena, who had a somewhat scared expression on her face. You okay there, Rena? I'm fine, Clover. I'm just a bit shaken that one of the royal guard members always caught always that one of the royal guard members almost caught us or caught you rather we got really lucky that our friends over there that our friends were there to unintentionally distract us i just wish we could have said goodbye to them they might have technically halted our progress a bit but they still seem like a pretty fun bunch to interact with I guess so. It would have been nice if they tagged along with us, but it's obvious that wouldn't happen. That's fine, though. After all, we can't forget what our mission is. Clover said with a resilient look in his face, unaware that most often the mission tends to not fulfill. Hmm. Rena slowly what nodded. Have dream. That was a sentence. <laughs> yeah, you're right. The mission doesn't tend to fulfill at all. Let's head to Waterfall and see where to go from there. Soon enough, the two of them made it to the narrowest part of the river they could find. The other side seemed to be about 20 feet away from them. Rena stepped on the edge of the river. Alright, I can work with this. She kneeled along the edge of the river as she focused her ice magic into her hands. Rena sunk her hands into the water as she began using her ice magic to freeze as much water as she could until it reached the other side of the river. The ice bridge was a few feet thick as it finished forming. Once it was done, Rena stood up before exhaling. <sighs> that should do it. Let's hurry over this bridge before it breaks. Right. Take my hand, Rena. Clover said as he carefully stepped onto the icy bridge. Good God, the two of them to baby you constantly. The two of them carefully made their way over the bridge until they made it to the other side of the river. They then stepped onto the dark blue ground, which seemed to be normal for this new biome. Clover breathed a sigh of relief. Finally. They get further away from that snowy wasteland back there. I'm sure this place will be quite a bit warmer, thankfully. Rena nodded in agreement. Yeah, looks like we entered Waterfall off the beaten path, so at least we'll be undetected. Let's get going, friend. You get to skip the cutscene! <laughs> Agreed. Clover and Rena began walking through the forest with mostly dead trees. This place was quite a while. This place was quite a lot darker than Snowden, but the place seemed to be slightly illuminated by the mysteriously glowing flora that was spread around this forest. Likely lichens. The two of them walked through this area without interruption until they soon reached a cave that had a faint cyan glow coming from inside. It was then Clover noticed a bright golden star next to the entrance of the cave. Clover walked over to it. Maybe we ought to use flowers help here. 
After Clover touched the star, Flowey popped out of the ground. Well, nice job, you two. We finally made it out of that unbearably cold hellscape these idiots, I mean monsters, call Snowden. I thought I'd freeze to death if you two took much longer. Clover slightly shivered, his body slowly warming back up from the coldness he felt earlier. Yeah, you ain't the only one. Flowey chuckled in amusement as he continued. Yeah, suck it up, cowboy. No one cares. <laughs> anyway, looks like you two entered Waterfall in a more unconventional way than I expected. Lucky for you two, I know this place like the back of my leaves. Just gotta make your way through this cave here and you'll be right back on track. Why is that capitalized? Geology dash reference. Okay, great. Oh, that's awesome. Rena nodded as she... God. Okay. Rena nodded as she responded. Alright. Thanks for the help, Flowey. No problem, buddy. We'll even throw in a save, like I always do. Oh, and Free? you want to flip for someone? Maybe try someone your own age. What? Like me. Clover LV1, Rena LV1, Lower Waterfall, file saved. Clover tipped his hat at Flowey as he smiled. Thanks for all the help, Flowey. We'll see you up ahead. Flowey had a proud grin on his face. It's my pleasure, Clover. Goodbye for now. He then sank back into the ground before the bright golden star took his place once again. Rina stepped in front of the cave entrance. I suppose it's about time we reached a new area. Let's go, Clover. Right along with you, Rina. Clover responded as he held her hand. The two of them walked into the cave, now one step closer to reaching the missing souls they came down here for. I can tell I love Paper Mario. Mm-hmm. Like, that, that whole fight section is just based on this. This is literally what it is. The, uh, the wooden Asgore reminded me of, uh, what's it called? Freaking the squirrel mech from that one Terraria mod. Can't remember the name of it, but 